Okay, welcome back to our next uh, set of videos for Repent and Repentance. And today, it's going to be on 1st and 2nd book of Samuel. So if you want to go to 1st Samuel 15, chapter 15, verse 1 is where we're going to start. In this chapter, repent is used three times. Make sure I got that correct. You ever get things up and then you start to doubt yourself, so I just want to make sure. So one, two, three times, and then one time in 2 Samuel. But 1 Samuel 15, verse 1, and we're going to go through it together. Samuel also said unto Saul, King Saul, The Lord sent me to anoint thee to be king over his people, over Israel. Now therefore hearken thou unto the voice of the word of the Lord. Um, I got to throw in there real quick uh, with all the deception that's going on with all the major doctrines with the Bible version issues. How many people are not hearkening unto the, the voice of the word of the Lord? Um, verse 2, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I remember that which is Amalek did to Israel, how he laid wait for him in the way when he came up from Egypt. Now go and smite Amalek, and utterly destroy all that they have, and spare them not, but slay both man and woman, infant and suckling, ox and sheep, camel and ass. Now notice it says him in the way in verse 2. It's talking about Israel. Verse 4. And Saul gathered the people together and numbered them and, and to lame. 200,000 footmen and 10,000 men of Judah. And Saul came to the city of Amalek and laid wait in the valley. And Saul said unto the Canaanites, Go, depart, get you down from among the Amalekites, lest I destroy you with them. For ye showed kindness to all the children of Israel when they came up out of Egypt. So the Canaanites departed from them among the Amalekites. Now, the context, the reason we started first is Saul has been commanded by God to wipe out the Amaleks utterly, everything. Verse 7, And Saul smote the Amalekites from Havilah unto, until thou comest to shore that is over against Egypt. And he took Agag, the king of the Amalekites, alive. Was he commanded to take him alive or to utterly destroy everybody? utterly destroyed everybody, and utterly destroyed all the people with the edge of the sword. But Saul and the people spared Agag and the best of the sheep and of the oxen and of the fatling and the lambs and all that was good and would not utterly destroy them, but everything that was vile and refused that they destroyed utterly. Then came the word of the Lord unto Samuel, saying, here's the first time it's used, It repenteth me that I have set up Saul to be king. For he is turned back from following me, and hath not performed my commandments. And it grieved Samuel, and he cried unto the Lord all night. So, we see here repentance. Repenteth. It's, um, has to do with the change in providence, and you'll see why here in a bit. Um, Apply to a supreme being to change the course of providential dealings. Uh, we'll get to verse 28. But right now he repented that Saul, he made Saul king. Now God knows the future. He knew it was going to happen. So this repentance here is a change in providence. What did he do? We'll find out later. I'll jump ahead a little bit. He takes the, um, the kingdom from Saul and gives it to his neighbor. David, king David. So it's a change in providence. God chose Saul to be king. Then he's like, no, I'm taking the kingdom from you. You're no longer going to be king, and I'm going to give it to David. And then later on, as you read through the story of uh, David, what he went through and then became King David. So, verse 12, that's the first time it's mentioned. Verse 12. And when Samuel rose early to meet Saul in the morning, it was told Samuel, saying, Saul came to Carmel, and behold, he set him up a place, and has gone about, and passed on, and gone down to Gilgad. 
go. And Samuel came to Saul, and, sa and Saul said unto him, Blessed be thou of the Lord, I have performed the commandment of the Lord. And Samuel said, What meaneth then this bleeding of the sheep in mine ears? He was to destroy everything, and he didn't. And the lowering of the oxen which I hear. It's getting cold out here. Um, verse 15, And Saul said, They have brought them from the Amalekites, for the people spared the best of the sheep and of the oxen to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God. And the rest we have utterly destroyed. I don't know if that means anything, but he says the Lord thy God talking to Samuel. Uh, so saying that to sacrifice unto the God of Israel, our God, my God, it's thy God. I don't, know if, I don't know if that means anything. 16. Then Samuel said unto Saul, Stay, and I will tell thee what the Lord hath said unto me this night. And he said unto him, Say on. And Samuel said, When thou wast little in thine own sight, wast thou not made the head of the tribes of Israel? And the Lord, Lord anointed thee king over Israel? And the Lord sent thee on a journey and said, Go and utterly destroy the sinners, the Amalekites, and fight against them until they be consumed. Wherefore then, it's getting a little windy. Wherefore then didst thou not obey the voice of the Lord, but didst fly upon the spoil, and didst evil in the sight of the Lord? And Saul so said unto Samuel, Yea, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord, and have gone the way which the Lord sent me, and have brought Agag, the king of the Amalekites, and have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. So basically, he was going off of what he wanted in his own interpretation of what he thought God wanted, instead of just listening to his word and obeying his word. I honestly believe he thought he was doing right. And he wasn't. 21. But the people took of the spoil sheep and oxen, the chief of the things which should have been utterly destroyed, to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God in Gilgal. And so now he's blaming the people. And Samuel said, Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifice as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of rams. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. You know how people are holding on to the Trinity and not letting go of men's words, pagan philosophy? Um, just had to throw that in there real quick. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord... He hath also rejected thee from being king. And Saul said unto Samuel, I have sinned, for I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord and thy words, because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. Um, how many times, I mean, I remember doing the uh, courageous man or foolish man about Adam and Eve, and when God basically confronted Adam, Adam, I joked about it because it's the truth, but Adam blamed everybody except himself. He didn't take responsibility. He blamed his wife, Eve, and he blamed God for, you know, it's this woman you created for me. So he basically blamed both of them. Um, but he feared the people and obeyed their voice. When you heed the voice, especially online with all these false converts and false um, preachers, or the pressure, you're in a certain group, social club, and everybody's saying this is how it is. Uh, you do well to heed the word of the Lord and not the voice of the people. Okay? Be not conformed to this world. Okay? Be not, don't be a friend to the world either. Verse 25. Now therefore I pray thee, pardon my sin, and turn again with me, that I may worship the Lord. Remember, God looks at the heart. And Samuel said unto Saul, I will not return with thee, for thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, and the Lord hath rejected thee from being king over Israel. The change in providence. 
And as Samuel turned about to go away, he laid hold upon the skirt of his mantle, and it rent. And Samuel said unto him, The Lord hath rent the kingdom of Israel from thee this day, and hath given it to a neighbor of thine that is better than thou. Change in providence. And also the strength of Israel will not lie nor repent, for he is not a man that he should repent. Actually, three verses but four times. Uh, that repent is used in 1 Samuel. But right here, it's talking about um, to sorrow or be pained for sin. Once again, uh, the strength here is a capital S on strength of Israel. Who's your strength today? Is it in your flesh? Is it in insurance? Is it in thing, things of this world? Who's your strength today? should be Jesus Christ. So I believe here it says, and also the strength of Israel, it's talking about Jesus Christ. He is the rock. Um, will not lie nor repent. Lie. Isn't lie a sin? And if he repents of lying, that makes Jesus a sinner. Makes God, Jesus who is God, a sinner. For he is not a man that he should repent. We as men sin. Now I understand people say, well, it says that for he is not a man. Like I said, this is the Godhead, the mystery of godliness. Um, it's talking about God, and like I said, the strength when you find out in the, in the New Testament that uh, Jesus is a man, but he's also God manifest in the flesh. That's a whole other uh, videos I've already done, and brother, sisters in Christ, brothers in Christ have done. But here, I put down for repent both times, it has to do with um, sin. God's not a sinner. Mm -hmm. God told him to do something, he didn't do it. God says up here that he's going to rend the kingdom from him. God's not a liar. It's, it's, it's uh, Samuel saying it's going to happen. Period. God's not a liar. God can change his providence, absolutely, but here it's saying that God is not going to change. He's not lying. That he's, you are going to lose the kingdom and he's going to give it to somebody else. And did it happen? Absolutely. Absolutely. Verse 30. Then he said, I have sinned, yet honor me now, I pray thee, before the elders of my people and before Israel, and turn again with me, that I may worship the Lord thy God. So Samuel turned again after Saul, and Saul worshiped the Lord. Then said Samuel, Bring ye hither to me Agag, the king of the Amalekites. And Agag came unto him delicately, and Agag said, Surely the bitterness of death is past. Uh, boy, was he wrong. And Samuel said, As thy sword hath made women childish, so, thy show, <laughs> so shall thy mother be childless among women. And Samuel hewed Agai in pieces before the Lord in Gilgal. Samuel obeyed the Lord. Saul did. Then Samuel went to Raham, uh, Ramah, and Saul went up to his house to, to Gibeah of Saul. And Samuel came no more to see Saul until the day of his death. Nevertheless, Samuel mourned for Saul, and the Lord repented that he had made Saul king over Israel. Once again, change in providence. Okay? How he's going to do something. God said, I want Saul to be king. Saul screwed up big time. And God's like, okay, change in providence. You're no longer going to be king. The repentance here is not that God sinned. And so far, we're going through this together. I'm not just going through the whole thing hardcore. We're doing uh, book by book together as we go through this, and so far, from my studies, repentance has nothing to do with an action uh, uh, like cleaning your life up. An action can happen before repentance, an action can happen after repentance, but the actual repentance part happens in the heart. When God uh, repents, He changes His providence. I'm doing it this way, now I'm going to do it that way. So, those are four times in three verses that repent is used in 1 Samuel. 
Let's turn to 2 Samuel 24, verse 9. 2 Samuel 24, verse 9. verse 9. Now what happens in the uh, verse chapter 24 it's King David it says here in verse 1 if you want to look over there for and again the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel and he moved David against them to say go number Israel and Judah. So King David numbers the people and the whole point of this is God is your strength. You don't you know Oh, I got this insurance, I got that insurance, you know, start counting your wealth, start counting, you know, how strong you are, or the strength of the things you have. Um, you're supposed to trust in the Lord, and the Lord's supposed to be your strength. Um, here, King David is asking him to number the people so he can see how strong Israel is. So we're going to verse 9. And Joab gave the sum of the number of the people unto king, unto the king. And there was in Israel 800,000 valiant men that drew the sword, and the men of Judah were 500,000 men. And David's heart smote him after that he had numbered the people. Having your heart right with the Lord, that's why King David was called a man after God's own heart. When you fall into sin and temptation, it's that heartfelt conviction um, that means everything. I've come across so many professing Christians that don't have that heartfelt conviction. They don't have that attitude. And David said unto the Lord, I have sinned greatly in that I have done, and that I have done, and now I beseech thee, O Lord, take away the iniquity of thy servant, for I have done very foolishly. Remember the study I did on, um, we just talked about in the last video, uh, prayer and testimony video, um, iniquity, if you hold iniquity in your heart, God will not hear you. Is King David holding the iniquity in his heart? No, he's saying, take away the, the iniquity of thy servant. And that verse is in uh, Psalms. For I have done very foolishly. For when David was up in the morning, the word of the Lord came unto the prophet Gad, David's seer, saying, Go and say unto David, Thus saith the Lord, I offer thee three things, choose three of three, choose thee one of them, that I may do it unto thee. Sorry for my reading today. 13. So Gad came to David and told him and said unto him, Shall seven years of famine come unto thee in the land, in thy land? Or wilt thou flee three months before thine enemies while thy, they pursue thee? Or that there be three days pestilence in thy land? Now advise and see what answer I shall return to him that sent me. And David said unto Gad, I am in a great strait. Let us fall now into the hand of the Lord, for his mercies are great. Praise the Lord. And let me not fall into the hand of man. A lot of us can testify how great God's mercy is. So the Lord sent a pestilence upon Israel from the morning even to the time appointed. And there died of the people from Dan even to Beersheba 70,000 men. Here's the verse with the word repent. And when the angel stretched out his hand upon Jerusalem to destroy it, to destroy it, the Lord repented him of the evil and said to the angel that destroyed the people, It is enough. Stay now thine hand. And the angel of the Lord was by the threshing place of... I'm probably going to mess this up. Aronai? Arona? Arona? Aruna? The Jebusite. Okay. Right here, I put down um, change in providence. Uh, because if you look up here... So the Lord sent a pestilence upon Israel from the morning even to the time appointed, three days. Now, the Lord was going to destroy the city, and the change of providence, He's going to stop. Okay. 
the Lord repented him of the evil and said to the angel that destroyed the people, it is enough. Change in providence, someone can say it's a change of mind, but if you look at the definition of the change of mind, it's for something past, and he's saying he's repenting on the spot, saying it's enough. Stop, it's enough. So that's why I said change in providence. It's not something that happened in the past when it comes to the change of mind. It's something that's present. It's happening right now. God's like, okay, stop, it's enough. Change in providence. He could have let it go. He let it, could let it keep going. Because uh, no, it says until the time appointed. Um, he could have, instead of doing the full three days, because you read this, I know it says even to the time appointed, and it says about three days of pestilence, but could God have stopped it early? said, okay, it's enough. It's enough. No more. That's enough. Change in providence. Because it doesn't say three days, it says the time appointed, and who appoints the time? God does. He said he wanted it done for three days, and if that's the case, the Lord here would have stopped at the end of three days. Okay, it's the third day, he's going to stop. He wouldn't have need uh, the angel of the Lord, uh, God the Father, and the Lord here, remember it's capital L, lowercase o-r-d, and there's only one Lord that's a capital L Lord, lowercase o-r-d, Jesus Christ. So, the Father is telling Jesus Christ, it's enough. So I believe he didn't go the full three days. Israel was suffering so great that it didn't go the full three days. God said, I repented of this evil, it's enough. So as we can see here, it's a change in providence. Change in providence. So, four times repentance was mentioned in 1 Samuel and one time in 2 Samuel. So, thank you for following along. Like I said, so far, when God repents, He's, it's not, he, he's not sinning when He repents. Change in providence. Okay? Uh, like I said, some people like to say change of mind. Um, but like I said, a change of mind has to do with something in the past. Uh, a lot of times when you read about a repentance... Sometimes, like when we just talked about Saul, someone can make the argument that repentance could also, you know, twofold meaning, where it's also his past that he made Saul king. It's talking about the past, a change of mind. But the providence, change of providence is there also because he's, he, his punishment. He wanted Saul to be king. Um, I believe until the day he died, I mean, he knows the future, but he made him king. And he's supposed to be king until the day he dies. But God took that away from him. So, and gave it to King David, uh, uh, David, and he became king. So thank you for following me on this study. We'll continue through these books and get through them. Uh, there's some great stories that I've read already about repentance. And uh, I'm going to get back to doing some more, just trying to get really back into the studies. So thank you for listening. I'll see you in the next video.